Present. Yolder Estrada. Present. Yolder Granados. Present. Yolder Hudak. Yolder Kowalski. Here. Yolder Mirabella. Present. And Chairman Jala. Here. Chairman, you have eight freeholders present. Clerk of the board, can you please lead us in a prayer and salute to the flag? <clears throat> Humbly we ask God, the giver of peace and the lover of charity, to give the entire family of nations true agreement with his will and to grant the light of his spirit on all who work for justice and peace. Please read the Statement of Compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Chair wishes to announce that pursuant to the requirements of New Jersey statutes annotated Title 10, Chapter 4, Section 10 of the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting of the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of the Union has been given by mailing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2015 along with periodic changes necessitated by circumstances to the newspapers circulating within the County of the Union who are designated to receive such notice and by posting the annual meeting schedule for the year 2015 in the administration building and further by filing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2015 with the Office of the County Clerk. Thank you. We will approve the following communications at the February 19th regular meeting. Let's get into our agenda. First up, uh, Joe Crine, County Sheriff. Good evening, Freeholders. Good to see everybody. Uh, you, we have two resolutions for your consideration. The first Canon Psychological, which is standard for us. We've used Canon for years and simply a screening process for our new hirees, as well as a fitness for duty for officers where deemed necessary. Second is obviously the care, as you can see, uh, Westfield Veterinary Group, which is different than last year's Islin. They priced a little bit less. They're here located in Union County. They're a 24 hour operation. We're excited to have them on board uh, for services with our canine unit as well. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any questions from the board? Granados. Just one question. Um, in reference to the K9 unit, how many K9s do we have within 11. the sheriff's? Eleven. That was it. That was good. By the way, also includes food. Any other questions? Freeholder Carter. Um, for number one, this is um, a renewal, correct? Well, it's an annual agreement, but yes, annual. we've used Canon for at least a decade or more. Right, and is it, it's basically the same amount that we use, but it's not to exceed, so, or is it just a flat, the flat amount? I would just want to No, confirm. it's a not to exceed. It's, okay. It's, it's an individual for each screening, a new IRA and a different price set. Okay, and that's been the amount we've been approving for a 15? Pretty consistent yep. time frame and no change in pricing. Yeah. Chairman, I'll make the uh, notation for the uh, agenda on the 19th. Any other questions? Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Nice you. Office of the Union County Prosecutor, Tim Eisenhower, First Assistant Prosecutor. Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. The uh, Prosecutor's Office has two resolutions on. I'll be happy to take any questions you may have. Any questions from the board? No questions. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. All right. Department of Administrative Services, <coughs> Norman Albert. Evening, Chairman, members of the board. Department of Administrative Services has four resolutions on for your consideration. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions anyone has. Any questions from the board? Freeholder uh, Mirabella. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director. Um, do you have any kind of actual numbers for um, the number one, the postage uh, that we expended in 2014? Just to yeah. get an idea of what that number looks like. Yes. Uh, five, I have the exact number. I believe it's 529,000 and some some change. So it's in that ballpark. And that's for county-wide? It's county-wide with the exception of some human services divisions that have a separate all right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Realtor Estrada. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, 
I'm looking at the one where number four, which goes into ensuring uh, uh, Marine One and Marine Two and the fireboats. Does the fireboats indicate that's the apparatus that we have to fight, to fight fires? Is that rider for that, or well, we don't really cover that uh, apparatus? Um, no, I believe it goes into the water. The, 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 the policy covers repair and replacement of the boats for any damage. Uh, and also liability uh, if the boats cause damage to other vessels or, or yeah. other other uh, people or property. Well, I'm talking about maybe you don't understand. The, the, we have a system, an apparatus that uh, fights fires, has the capacity of putting out thousands upon thousands of gallons to fight fires. The only thing is that it needs a pump to be in the water. And then the uh, the last time I saw it operational, it was placing the barge, the unit itself. Does that insurance cover that part of the uh, firefighting uh, no, I, situation? or I'm not sure. I'll have to get back to you on that. Okay. I will find out. Right. It's an apparatus that fights fires. That it's a piece of it's, it's a various pieces of equipment that are housed in many places throughout the county, and, and some of it is, is mounted to a boat or to a barge. Uh, Andy, a Andy Moran might be able to address <coughs> Excuse me, through you, Chairman. Um, I believe you're referring to the Neptune system, which is dispersed through uh, different fire departments throughout the Union County. Um, this is uh, uh, our two marine units. It has nothing to do with the uh, Neptune system. That's a totally separate system. Um, our, one of our boats does have uh, fire right. capabilities. It has uh, a um, large water cannon mounted on the front of the boat, and it can uh, suck water up from um, from whatever body of water it's in and uh, suppress fires. So, so out of curiosity now, it does, do we actually uh, ensure the, piece of, uh, the damage that that piece of equipment can cause or no, that's done through mutual aid or how is that uh, handled? The, the Neptune system, that's, it's mounted in a barge. I've seen the mark. I mean, it's, like, it, it's, it's portable. A, it, uh, you know, it's, we can deploy it to any body of water. Drew water from the bay in uh, Seaside for that fire, um, and in Elizabeth it hooks up the fire hydrants also. Uh, if there's no body of water to draw from, you know, if we have insurance on that piece of equipment, I mean, and, and to the damage, like for example, this is um, this is marine uh, policy insurance to cover the equipment and and whatever. If in case it was involved in an accident, it would cover some of those uh, needs. I'm just asking what now since it's different. Does, do we have that kind of a policy to cover those, uh, the, uh, For the, Neptune? the system? Yeah. The Neptune system, I'd have to look into that. Sir. Let's, let's check it out. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Mayor uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, not, not necessarily having to do with the insurance portion of it, because I know that's why you're, it's under you, uh, Director. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to ask Director Moran to... Um, Give me a kind of a, not tonight, but um, some numbers on the frequency of that use of those two um, boats. Uh, and I know from my experience working with the uh, fire officials, sometimes there's been um, some communication between the fire service at the county mutual aid and the, and the police department about the proper usage and staffing. I haven't heard that in a while, but I want to see if you can do some research and uh, let me know uh, how that's working out. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, that's it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Department of Economic Development, Deputy County Manager Reyes. Good evening, Chairman. Freeholders, the Department of Economic Development has 12 items for your consideration. I'm ready to answer any questions you may have. Am I correct in three of these are reductions, change orders going down? That's correct. Um, two, three, and four are change orders for reductions. That's good. Um, can you tell me about uh, six, seven, and, and, and eight uh, specifically? Um, it looks like these are old projects, I guess, 2013, 2014. Uh, I do what, have what, Tom Minio here that can help. But now? for... These are for designs, engineering designs of the um, for the bridges. 
seven and eight are minor bridges, which means they're less than 20 feet long. Um, number six is, I believe, a uh, uh, one that's longer than 20 feet for the Netherlands uh, Avenue Bridge. And these are for um, the design of the fixing of the bridges. That's what this construction needs. Here are capital dollars um, that are going to be used for the engineering of the design. And then the construction, we usually go after um, grant money. For example, I believe six, we have um, already grant money for the actual construction once it's done. But for, for these bridges, though, it's this, they're two years out. This is just a first phase, which is just, which will take about two years before we ever have a completion of the actual um, fixing of the bridges. I also noticed that there's three different uh, companies here. Is there a reason why we did that? Was there any, I'm just throwing it out there, was there any thought into whether or not we could get any savings um, about having them with one? I'll ask uh, Tom to answer that question. Yes, in the past we did try uh, grouping in groups of threes, they're culprits. We, we, we did. And uh, I found that over, over time that's really not the necessarily the most efficient way to go because of uh, delays in construction due to, start of construction due to historical uh, problems or from uh, uh, various other problems including permits that the, uh, the one contractor is bound to have a problem on one of the three jobs and I, I feel it's be more efficient to have push each contractor to be efficient on his job and get it done and uh, not not uh, try to. I, I don't really see the economy of grouping them, and the prices have uh, borne that out for their okay. service. Thank you. And, okay. Any other questions, Freeholder Shrada? Um, <clears throat> In total, there are six projects here that will provide the sign, construction, administration, and inspection services, totaling to about one and a quarter. $1.25 million. Now, that's only for one facet of the project. Has anybody estimated? I know that one of the things that the engineers are going to do is give us some estimations in order for bid specs and what have you, but do we have anybody in-house that's made any kind of projection of the potential cost of these six projects alone? For the construction phases? Yes. They're general, but they're usually pretty close. Uh, five of these are culverts and the, uh, or minor bridges, and they generally go anywhere from five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars. So it's about two and a half million, two and a half to three million dollars for those projects. So that means that you you, you pay out so in the area over two hundred thousand dollars for uh, for design, construction, administration services, and inspection services, and it costs only. Between five to six hundred thousand dollars per project, and there's five of them. So that's that. Those five would be up almost three million, two and a half to three, and the other, the bridge, the project was about one and a half million dollars. So the summation of of so it'd be one and a half million plus, say five times five hundred thousand would be a two and a half. It's about four million, four million dollars, four million, four million five hundred thousand. Now traditionally, we have really not uh, garnished that kind of money on a yearly basis to upgrade. Uh, Bridges, do we? Uh, actually, yes. I did a little bit of research on that, and just just to, to try to answer a question a, a little bit. But uh, yes, and, and in you know, in general, I, I think we try not to generalize it. We get we get notifications. We have our bridges inspected every two years, and our culverts. Uh, we had them inspected ourselves uh, several years ago. And now the state inspects the culverts as well, and uh, so we. It's hard to anticipate which one's going to pop up that's structurally deficient, but you can make some estimations. And in general, we have 140 bridges in the county, and if you know, but they're built in various years. Uh, uh, but we've been averaging about 1.3 bridges a year since I've been here. And if you take the 100-year life of a bridge and 140 of them, that's 1.4 per year. So we're kind of there, I think. We're actually a little less than that, but I think what's going to happen is you know, there's a lot of bridges were built in the 20s and 30s, and I think when they come up, it might accelerate our costs. Right now, we're doing a little less than 1.4 a year. So you feel that possibly there will be enough funds available in order for us to do that? 
I, right now, I haven't t what I put on my projection for on, on the budgets is uh, uh, in, in generally in, in our budgets, I put in about six million for the road projects uh, and uh, about three and a half to three and a half million per uh, for the, the bridges and culverts, and about a million for an, or so for the intersections, and then we do environmental remediations projects and we do some dam projects. So my general pro projections over the years, those numbers you see in my six-year chart, does plan on constructing these bridges and others as they're bound to come. Okay, so now we have a potential of six different projects of which five of them are culverts and one bridge. Yes. Are any of these considered uh, in the deficient list? Or they're all structurally deficient. All are the structurally deficient. Yes, yes. We, we're uh, unfortunately or, or fortunately... Uh, structurally deficient, as you've probably heard, doesn't mean it's going to collapse the next day, but it would. But it often means you have to post it, which means you put a sign up and limit the vehicle weights. And then on county roads, that's particularly bad because they're they're designed to allow the trucks to go through the county. So uh, we're pretty much keeping up with the structurally deficient bridges as they pop up. We do it. We we have. Uh, Right now, we have five structurally deficient bridges, all of which are being either designed or, or taken care of, and we have uh, we have more culverts. We have almost we had 30 culverts, and we addressed about half of them. The half we addressed were the ones on county roads. The ones that are on local roads, we posted, and many times a, a posted culvert on a local road is is fine because it, we don't anticipate big trucks driving down those roads anyway. But it is our goal to have no structurally deficient bridges or culverts. And this, I guess that's our goal as well, but uh, we understand as well that it will take some major financial commitment in order to take care of all the deficient. So we're going by priorities in terms of those that need it the most, which you have done all along. Yes. The last time the state did the study, which was it last year? Yes. And how many bridges were, you said, in Union County that were? Last year, last year, actually, we, well, yes. The ones, there's, let me see if I got the list up here. Bridges that are structurally deficient on the list were Raymond Avenue, and that one's being constructed now, so that's being that's taken care of. Um, Madison Hill Bridge, it's in, that's been going out to bid this, this month or early next month. Mountain Avenue Bridge, we're waiting for a grant from the state. Uh, we've designed it, and the state committed to a grant. We just haven't received it. Um, and the, uh, the South Front Street Bridge in Elizabeth, that's a, a very big project, and what we we're able to do is to get the NJTPA to fund a concept development program, and as as that graduates, the uh, they should be they they, they uh, would would fund the construction of the new bridge, unless there's some issues with uh, it, th that's the plan. And then and then the other one is another Wood Avenue bridge that just popped up on the list in the playing field. So that's the bridges. As a matter of fact, the councilman is here. I guess he must have found out we're going to talk about. The bridge in Front Street, huh? Okay. So that's all we have, huh? That's all. That's all. I, I, I know two more are coming. I don't. I can't give you the names, but two more are coming. I, I thought I had them all taken care of last year, and I was going to apply for a different kind of bridge uh, grant this year, and uh, they told me two more popped on the list, and that's just. They just. They just, well, I'm expecting 1.4 per year. Every year, you expect one or two to pop up, and that's kind of what happens. Uh, and we planned uh, the construction accordingly. This is fascinating. Can you can you send us a report on this? Sure. Between now and uh, yes, I'll, I'll, next well, meeting. Two, okay. two weeks. Okay. okay. Thank you. I will. Thank you. Good job. Oh, if you have another question, I'm sorry. That's all right. Yes, we I hold the card. Um, only be uh, he can come back up for the Netherwood Bridge. Sorry. <laughs> um. Because I know that for Netherwood Bridge, and that's been a conversation for a little while now, but it was mentioned that we have the grant money, for, we received grant money we for the it. Netherwood Avenue Bridge. Yes, the state the state has committed $1 million to that project. Oh, it's $1 million, not $1.5 million? Because that's the what I thought I heard The project itself will cost a million and a half, but they only committed $1 million toward it. We are, we are attempting to get some more... Uh, we have another bridge, the Summer Street Bridge in uh, Elizabeth, that we got a million-dollar grant for, but only close to 600000 And we're trying to 
convince I believe the state will allow us to take that 400,000 and put it toward them. Another one. Okay. And what is the time frame that we're no, looking at? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That 400,000 is going to the Madison Hill Bridge and not to another one. I apologize. I, I don't have my I'm sure whole, that I don't have my whole report. I'm sure, it'll all come out in all of the report that you're going to provide us. Okay. But the time frame that we're looking at, because um, making sure from when we receive the grant, you know, when does the grant expire? They they used to say two years, but some depending on the situation, sometimes you have a historical uh, problem, or a historic district kind of a problem, or sometimes you have issues, and uh, we've. Uh, gotten them extended to three years but we haven't received it yet we're design we're just hiring the engineer to design it now it takes at least a year to design it so I was really thinking that will go out to construction in probably early 2017 if everything goes fine and that's plenty of time to spend the grant money okay thank you we have a class yes, um, as for grant money that's funding this is any of this from the state's transportation trust fund Yes, it's all from the Transportation Trust Fund. So, except for the NJTPA, be a that is. If the Transportation Trust Fund doesn't continue. Absolutely, if we don't, we don't have that. We, we get, uh, well, we get about the money we get now is, is we get the million dollar things for the bridges. It's about a million dollars a year, and sometimes more if, if we if we apply and we get chosen for an extra million, and uh, we get traditionally around four million dollars every year for it, and that's used. Even if we fund the road project with it, that means there's, with, with the four million, not the, the, that means there's, if we have to fund the whole road project, then we wouldn't have the money for, for the bridges. Because the, the county does the significant funding, funds all the intersections, not all, most of the intersections. We do get grants for that too. And most of the uh, minor bridges are funded completely by the county, not by, by TTF, but, but the TTF offsets that money, so. Any further questions? We'll do the nonce. Thank you, Chairman. Um, if you're there right there, can, um, can you please elaborate on the church store building project, number one? Sure. That uh, church store is actually um, the store that's located in Deserted Village, and uh, that is for, um, for fire alarms to be placed inside the building. And what's the cost for that? With the cost, um, actually, Costs. What happened was that the account was mistakenly closed and before the last bill came in. So we're asking for a new account number and the last bill is the 2300. Anything further from the board? Thank you. Thank you. Department of Finance, B.B. Taylor. Good evening, Chairman and members of the board. The Department of Finance has one resolution for your consideration this evening, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Anyone? Thank you, Director. Thank you. Department of Human Services, Director Frank Gazzo. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The uh, Department of Human Services has two resolutions on for your consideration, and I would be happy to answer any questions you have at this time. Um, if I may, the first one is just the uh, third year renewal on the uh, area plan for the for aging, provide services to prevent premature institutionalization, uh, institutionalization for seniors and home health care services and services to keep seniors in their homes as long as possible. The second one is a, an amendment to a resolution that you passed earlier on Code Blue to add additional money um, because um, the money that was added last year through resolution is running out because of the amount of Code Blue nights that we seem to be having and unfortunately seem to be continue to having through the end of the, uh, the winter. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, in reference to number two, the code blue, do you have rough numbers on how many individuals we've helped through that program? We're in the process of putting that together. Um, as you know, we had the point in time that we had to cancel because of the weather conditions, 
and those surveys are still coming in um, relative to the agencies participating. So I'll have that probably within the next few days, and I'll get it to you before you, uh, you have to vote on this resolution in two weeks. Bill Dukowski. Uh Yes, Director, um, do you have a, a count on the number of, uh, of nights we've had so far, COPA? Yes, I do. Um, so far this year, uh, we've had 48 Code Blue nights, um, and we've spent approximately $74,000, which is higher than we than um, we anticipated. Um, what we're finding out is, just very, very briefly, is that a lot of people that are on state assistance now, there is a 60, um, th there is a 60-month um, time limit, and a lot of those time limits now are ending. And as a result of those ending, they're no longer, people are no longer eligible for emergency assistance. So Code Blue is the only program that will help them come out, you know, in nights like that. Um, additionally, anyone with a conviction of a controlled dangerous substance um, is not eligible for tr traditional emergency assistance. Code Blue, again, is the option of last resort for individuals that find themselves in that. And then the last is the state also now imposes an, uh, a six-month uh, moratorium on emergency assistance for people that have, uh, you know, moved from another state. Um, until they get their case transferred and whatnot, again, Code Blue is the option of last resort um, that's available to them. Reholder Strata. Yes, uh, Director Gusso, on uh, number one. Now, last year's, what, what was the figures that we used last year? I know we, that we allocate this money, but is that covering all the needs that we have from Global Options and all the other programs that we have of, to assist this kind of a group? It covers the needs as we know them to be today. As you will recall, because of some state funding that we, we received last year, through the budget process, the board was, was good enough to uh, agree to and allocate additional dollars to compensate for the loss of state dollars. Um, it provides services. Um, as far as we know, there are no specific waiting lists for any of the types of services that we provide. As you know, that changes as the year progresses. We, um, we try to handle that by moving money within the existing areas as we can, which we're allowed through resolution. Um, but at this time, there are no real waiting lists wait for any types of services that we can provide through the county. So let me ask you, the, the $4 million here compared to the amount that we used the last year, that means the state uh, amount plus the county amount and federal, it's, it's, it's a the federal, the federal and uh, and county amount. Is that is still is that below this this figure here, or is the, the figure is is actually more, and that's because we while we received a, a decrease, there are there are more county dollars going into this. So I think a two hundred nineteen thousand additional dollars from the county are going in to keep those services at a level that we're all comfortable with relative to the need out there. Um, without it, you would have waiting lists. Right. So 4.90 is the amount that the federal government is providing, and we are providing the rest. Is that what you're saying? No, it's a total of 4 point million. Total it's combined. It's broken up by federal, state, and local dollars. Okay. And there's also program income, because you know we provide, we get program income for people that get meals and stuff. Yeah. So that's roughly $130,000, Thank you. Any further questions? Vice Chairman Berg. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Director Guzzo, I, I had assumed that, uh, going back to number two, the code blue, I had assumed the need for more money was due to um, some unusually cold weather. Do I understand that it's also due to the fact that there are more people out in our community in need of this service? I would, I would, I would agree with that without having the count, the unofficial count in. I also, um, you know, we, we're looking at the program because we're also finding um, that an inordinate amount of people are coming in from Essex County and cases are being closed perhaps prematurely and being and over here on cold nights and we, of course, are sheltering them. So we, we are going to be looking at the criteria for this because while, you know, we believe and I know the board believes the same thing, that no one should be out in the cold and extreme conditions, we have to look at what you know, our responsibility is versus other counties 
And again, you know, this program is one of the is the only one still in the state in the state that we operate the way that we do. And you know, we've asked the state numerous times to incorporate that as part of what their overall plan is. And you know, they, this is where we are. And and one other question: You mentioned that there's now um, a 60-month limit on emergency assistance. Um, the emergency assistance dollars, do those come from the county the way these dollars do? All the, emer the, the EA dollars all come in from the state, um, but there is, a, there is a time limit on the, amount of, you know, on the amount of time, if you will, that an, an individual can collect those services, and it's a 60 months. So when they reach 60 months, in essence, they're, they're without a safety net. And so, as again, Code Blue provides that safety net during the winter for those individuals that find themselves without any recourse in terms of benefits. And in essence, you're switching from state dollars to county dollars. Switching it back to the local level to support. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Just a quick clarification. The safety net for 60 months, what happens after that? You have to wait X number of months before you can go back in it, or you're out? You're out. You're out together. 60 month, there's a 60 month. But that wasn't like that before. It's changed. It's changed. The nature of the programs have changed. Obviously, it's a work program as opposed to an assistance program. And the, the whole concept, flawed or not, is the fact that people will be able to get off assistance in a certain way, which, as we all know, is not true. So let me ask you, uh, uh, in theory, what is supposed to happen after 60 months? I mean, because I'm sure that we have many people. It's like the, the uh, back-to-work program, whereby we know that 80% of them, okay, we're fine. They found some kind of a job, means to maintain themselves. But the 20%, which are the chronic, uh, unemployed, which is which is what happened, you know, obviously, and you've been here, you know, for a number of years, freeholder, and you remember welfare reform. You know, the whole idea was that 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 would uh, that would happen. But what happened is you got down to the chronically unemployed, and those are the people that we deal that are dealt with on a daily basis that, you know, have no skills, have no, no income, and no resources, and that's really where, what we're dealing with today. Um, you know, let me, let me clarify, there are, there are benefits that people still can access, but things like the emergency benefits and whatnot, absolutely they are out um, as a result of reaching a 16-month time limit. Any other questions from the board? Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Department of Public, Public Works and Facilities, Director Joseph Graziano. Good evening, Chairman. Uh, Freeholders, the Department has one resolution on tonight for your consideration, and I'll try and answer any questions you have. Any questions from the board? None. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Cornerstone Behavioral Hospital of Union County, Acting Administrator Michael Fleming. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Cornerstone Behavioral Hospital has uh, one resolution for your consideration. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions from the board for your Estrada? Yes. Good evening, sir. How are you? Good evening. The, um, this contract with Trinitas, I know that's something that we did not have before. Correct. Did we? We had, we had a couple of psychiatrists leave our employ, and we had to do, on a rather quick fashion, uh, to get psychiatrists on board. And... Uh, Mr. Guzzo uh, made arrangements uh, with Trinitas, and we were able to uh, make this arrangement. Is it the intention to replace these uh, this positions or to keep it in that fashion? Um, we will uh, probably be getting two full-time uh, psychiatrists uh, by the middle of the year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on the board? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Members. Office of the County Council, Robert Berry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Office of the County Council has four items on tonight's agenda relative to ongoing litigation. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Anything from the board? Thank you, County Council. You're welcome. Office of the County Manager. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. The Office of the County Manager has two resolutions on for your consideration and will attempt to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions from the board? Thank you, County Manager. This time I'll, I will ask if any freeholders have any additional resolutions to add 
or any friendly amendments to these resolutions? Yeah, a lot of good. Chairman. You got that, uh, Mr. Clerk, one from Freeholder Renatos. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, unfortunately I'd like to add a, uh, a condolences resolution for uh, Chief Kelly of the Westfield Fire Department. Uh, he was a, uh, a good friend and a, and a great chief, and uh, he'll be sorely missed by uh, Westfield and, and all the fire chiefs around Union County. Absolutely. Thank you. Your Carter. Yes, I have um, a condolence also in laudatory. I have an additional as well, Chairman. Um, Chairman, I was thinking also maybe uh, possibly doing a condolence to the Cranford uh, High School students who died within Warren Ankle Park. I think, I think that's an excellent idea for mm -hmm. the board. That's from the board, yeah. From the board. Absolutely. Anything else? Chairman, yeah, I'd like to be added to number four. Sorry, Ch <coughs> Chairman, which... Number four. four. Anything else? All right, <coughs> County Council, uh, we, uh, please make your statement relative to tonight's executive session. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Pursuant to the open provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, the public body may go into executive session for the purpose of discussing certain enumerated subjects. This board now wishes to enter into executive session for the purposes of discussing attorney-client privilege communication and discussion of potential settlement in lieu of litigation relative to the property located at 28 Prince Street, Elizabeth, New Jersey, and attorney-client privilege communications and discussion of potential settlement in the matter of Suarez v. Peralta Rodriguez and the County of Union at Alice. The minutes of the executive session shall be prepared by shall be separated from the minutes of the open public session. The minutes of the executive session redacted <coughs> as appropriate and necessary shall be available in approximately five <coughs> days. Clerk to the board shall retain the original minutes until such time as the confidential limitations have been removed, at which time they shall be made available. Upon the affirmative vote of a majority of the members present, the board may retire to executive session. Upon the board's return, as this is an agenda meeting, it will not take any formal action on the matters discussed. Thank you. May I have a motion to enter into executive session? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion was made by Freeholder Mirabella, seconded by Freeholder Carter. Clerk of the board, may I have a roll call? Freeholder Carter? Yes. Freeholder Estrada? Yes. Freeholder Granados? Aye. Freeholder Kowalski? Yes. Freeholder Mirabella? Aye. Freeholder Wright? Yes. Vice Chairman Bergen? Aye. And Chairman? John. Aye. Chairman, you have eight votes in the firm. Thank you. Executive. Yeah. Yeah.